Hi, how are you doing? Welcome back to your program uh, with Corporate Finance and Investment Banking. Today's session, I thought I'm going to start with this uh, photograph of this good-looking guy. His name is Aaron Flynn. He used to be a popular Austrian actor a few decades back. Not that I know of him, but I thought this quote of his uh, is very relevant to today's discussion. He basically says, my problem lies in reconciling my gross or gross habits with my net income. What he's essentially trying to say is that uh, my spending habits, you know, the amount of money I see, you know, I'm an actor, so the amount of money I spend on my know, private jet, my Lamborghini cars or uh, whatever, uh, are not compatible enough for me to save enough money. So I probably run into debt every, mo every month and I have to borrow money to uh, go by even though I make so much money. Now, uh, you, you, you remember, and you'll, and you'll notice as we go down this session why this is kind of relevant to what we are uh, doing today. Now, a few sessions back, especially the first session, we looked at this. Now, let's a, a personal income statement where you can write down your expenses. Excuse me. So now let's say your friend came to you and your friend told you, hey, I took your advice to write down a... Uh, my personal statement of expenses and revenue. So last month I spent 10,000 rupees eating outside. I spent 10,000 rupees on food. Now you'll probably listen to that and is that information useful to you? It is to a certain extent, but it could be more useful, right? Because all you know is he spent 10,000 rupees eating outside. You don't know uh, how much he makes, right? You don't, you don't know what percentage of a salary is 10,000 rupees. So, I mean, it's 10,000 rupees, 2% of your salary is 10,000 rupees, 20% of your salary really depends, right? If 10,000 rupees is only 2% of your salary, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, you can go out, you can you know, spend five times more money eating outside. But if 10,000 rupees is 30% of your salary, stop. And you, know, you can't spend that much money eating outside. It's, it's not the right thing to do. So, it's more helpful to you if your friend expresses ex expense to you as, as a ratio, saying, my I spent 10 percentage of my income eating outside last month but obviously friends don't talk to each other in terms of ratios that would be very weird so you know he comes and tells you I spent 10,000 rupees you probably ask him how much uh, I mean how much do you make and he says one lakh and then you figure out it's 10 percent and you say oh that sounds reasonably right similarly for companies um, this basic income statement here you remember every expense can be expressed as a percentage of a company's revenue so that you get a sense of for that company is it good or bad and then you can also start comparing this company to other companies the only way uniform way you can make that comparison is if all these were expressed as ratios in percentage of revenue and sometimes expenses are ex expressed as percentages of other expenses for example you could express the rent expense as a percentage of the operating expense you know for example here 95,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees is probably 12 percentage of your operating expenses your rent, rent expense you, you can you can do that so uh, what I have done in to enable us to do that better in today's session is I've kind of put together a very basic snapshot of Domino's income statement. And, and, and I'll walk you through how I got these numbers. Uh, I don't have any secret sources. Those are the same sources I explained to you in, the, in your last session. You see there's the first line that's Domino's revenue for 2008, 2009, 2010. Since we are going to compare uh, performances we are going to lay down this month to month next to each other this whole way of doing it you know I remember back in my uh, investment banking days at Credit Suisse uh, we used to call this whole thing benchmarking you know as a new analyst this was the first thing they would get me to do because nobody would want to you know sit down and make these excel files so as, as a, in my first few months in the job most of what I was doing was this whole benchmarking analysis. So what is benchmarking analysis that these you know, investment bankers and other corporate finance people do? Essentially it means, uh, for example, here it says Domino's is 2008 revenue is 210 crores, 211. 2009 revenue is 280 crores. 2010 revenue is 423 crores. I just went to Google Finance. You see here Google Finance. This is the page for Jubilant Foodworks. And uh, their revenue is right here for the 8, 9, 10, 2008, 2009, 2010, 211 crores, 280 crores, 423 crores. Those are the same numbers I put up here. Then I took 
Domino's gross margin, the gross margin, I again went back to Yahoo Finance and right here the gross profit is the same as the gross margin and I, it says here right there, right, 27 crores in 2008, uh, 66 crores in 2009 and 114 crores in 2000. That's essentially what I have here. I also, and you know, I when I looked at that, I was surprised. I was like, "Wow, that's that's a fairly low gross margin." If if you made four hundred and twenty-three crores in revenue and you have only one hundred and fourteen crores in gross margin, that's roughly about twenty-three percent gross margin. That's pretty low. And and then digging deeper, I realized that's because Domino's they include their staff salary in their cost of goods sold before gross margin they, they do that which is why this is such a you know suppressed number so to get that number I couldn't find that number in Yahoo here it is all blank for whatever reason so I actually went back to their uh, filings you remember this one right their IPO filing and here right here staff costs I took, took the staff cost for the year 2009 and for the year 2008 which is 55 crores and 42 crores uh, and uh, I just put them down here and then their operating income I went back to Yahoo Finance yeah and right here uh, the operating income 14 crores in 08 17 crores in 09 and 42 crores in 2000 10. That's how what I write. And interest expense again. I went back to Yahoo Finance and I got that number from here, right here. You see that interest expense. And and this, this all of other things. The only reason I got interest expense is because it seemed like a pretty big number uh, related to the other expenses. And I thought maybe it'd be very interesting for you to look at it and you know understand what role this plays in the whole income statement, right here. Now let's start our analysis. Now one of the first things you can start doing in a in a in a uh, benchmarking analysis. Let's let's call this benchmarking analysis. Okay, is the straightforward thing is you can start saying revenue growth. Okay, two thousand nine, my revenue grew. Domino's revenue grew at thirty three percent compared to two thousand eight. You see that. Uh, you know, you can look, look at the formula. There is a fairly simple mathematical formula. I'm sure we don't have to go into that in detail. Um, so, 2008 revenue was 211 crores. 2009, that revenue grew by 33%, and my revenue that year was 280 crores. Let's just call this growth percentage. Let's just make this look a little different so that we know it's a growth percentage. I'm going to copy that formula over. And you see what happened here. In 2010, Domino's revenue grew by 51%. It's 33% here, but it's 51%. So, so that's your first step in the analysis when you, you have to dig in. You look at this and you say, hmm. 33% revenue growth, okay, sounds reasonable, I don't know, but it is what it is. 51%, so what happened here? What happened between 2009 and 2010 for Domino's revenue to grow so much? And you can come up with your own hypothesis to, uh, you know, to explain why this happened. Uh, I'm going to write down here. Why did this revenue grow so much? It could be because uh, they raised more money into the company and they invested that money and they got a lot of new stores into the into the company so their revenue went up by that much and uh, you know that, that that is probably the case you know the, their IPO probably uh, kind of happened uh, around that time they got a lot of new money into the company so they expanded their sales a lot that is your first step in analysis second step now let's go to staff cost employee cost like I said you can express most expenses as a percentage of revenue there you go so in the year 2008, Domino spent 20 percentage of their revenue as paying their employees. Okay, we're again going to say percentage of revenue. So this is a little more easy for us to decipher. Uh, oops, we lost it there. Okay, 20 percent. Whereas in 2009, they spend a similar amount. So that's not a, a, a bad thing, right? So that the amount of money they're paying their employees as a percentage of revenue is roughly consistent. Now, suppose you saw 20% here. And let's say, suppose this was 
then you, you start asking questions. If it was 45%, you probably should be thinking, okay, what happened there? Was there some kind of a union strike? Did Domino's have to pay extra money to its employees that, that year? Or maybe uh, there, were, there was a lot of, you know, highly un unproductive people working around. Who are those people? Let's dig into Domino's list of, uh, you know, employees, the managers, the chefs, the deliveries, and see who are the unproductible, unproductible guys and start firing them. So that's the kind of decisions you will make when you start looking at these numbers. That's the second step. Okay, we'll actually put this back at the right now, it's 20%. Gross margin is always expressed as a percentage of revenue. It's about 13%. 24%, 27%. So this is this is very interesting. You see what is happening here? Domino's gross margin is slowly becoming healthier and healthier. It is 13% in 2008, 24% and 27%. So what is happening is that as the company achieves scale, right? Uh, in 2008, they probably had, let's say, 100, 100 restaurants. In 2009, they probably had 200 restaurants. Here, they probably had 300 restaurants. As they grow in scale, the company is becoming more efficient. And that is very evident from this number here. And that is because companies like Domino's are a very, very high, this is a very high fixed cost business, a company like Domino's. So once you make these fixed cost expenses up front, then you can just bring in as many customers in as possible, your fixed costs really don't go up that much. Yeah. So, and so your, your profitability goes up. Your revenue is there. Your revenue, let's say that's a variable. Let's say your, your fixed costs are a constant. If these stay a constant and your revenue goes up, everything that goes up actually becomes your profit, right? Every increment. So such a company is called a company that has very good operating leverage. That, that essentially means that uh, with like additional revenue can be brought in with very little increment in fixed costs. I'm not saying Domino's is a great operating leverage company, but this trend for these three years seems that you know operating leverage is pretty decent here. So let's keep going down. Operating income again can be expressed or is always expressed as a percentage of revenue, 7% in 08, 6% in 09, 10% in uh, 010. Um, you know, these two years, uh, it's okay. I mean, 7% is coming down 6%. It, it came down by a percent. That's not much to worry. But, you know, if, if you were an IPO investor in Domino in the year 2009, if you want to invest in their IPO, you'll probably question, why isn't your operating income going up? Your revenue seems to be going up. Your staff costs seem to be a constant uh, and your gross margins are going up. Why isn't your operating income going up? And there could be any re any number of reasons for that, right? And, and, any, and, and how do you come across a hypothesis for those reasons as you begin to understand what is there between the gross margin and the operating income? Uh, you should remember from this, uh, I'm sorry, from here that there are all these things, rent, marketing expense, administrative expense, and all of that. So you, you dig a little more deeper into Domino's management, you ask them questions or you read their financial reports and you'll probably find out maybe uh, in 09, even though their revenues went up so much, maybe their rent expenses went up disproportionately or maybe their administrative expenses, maybe to prepare for their IPO, they hired a lot of senior management. So maybe their management expenses went through the roof. So it could be any of those reasons why their operating income is not growing. You can get to... The correct reason only after you spend you know detailed analysis doing this, but this will kind of get you started into that process on how to think about doing that analysis. Uh, and uh, interest expense. Now, interest expense is you know you can express it as a percentage of revenue as well, but it's more meaningful if you exhibit if you you know highlight the interest expense as a percentage of the operating income. And the reason for that is uh, you know. Once your revenue comes in, then you have your gross profit uh, right here, and then uh, you have all your operating expenses, and then you have your operating income, right? Only if you have profits from your operating income can you pay interest, right? Your, your, your 
your first priority is to run your stores and all that. Only if you have some profits left there, you're going to pay your interest or you're probably going to default on your interest, which is why an interest expense is better, uh, you know, s suited if you explain that, if you express that as a percentage of operating income. Uh, these are all percentage of revenues right there. This is a percentage of revenue as well. Forgot an R there. Okay. Now, and again, your net income is generally again expressed as a percentage of your sales. And again, you see what's happening here: four percent, three percent, eight percent. Something has happened in two thousand nine uh, where you know some part of Domino's cost went out of control, which is why uh, their net income is very similar. But you see what's beginning to happen here. As the biz business picks up scale, more money is coming into the business and they're opening more stores, more customers, more revenue coming in. But they've invested in the last, I think Domino's, the company is about 10 years old in India. They've invested all this money on their ovens, their technology, they've built an amazing brand. So their margins go up. So for every rupee of revenue comes in, lesser and lesser is being spent on the expenses and more and more is coming into the profits. That's how a company scales up and that's how it should. When you're looking at a company, you should see trends like this. These are trends of a healthy company uh, before you invest in the company. Now that being said, let's look at one sample strategic decision that a company could uh, like Domino's could make apart from these financial ratios. Now let's say this year, the, you know, the Domino CEO says, I want to, I think Domino's should borrow rupees 300 crores to, uh, to borrow 300 crores in the year 2011 in order so that we can expand and open 100 new stores. Okay, we just assume that it's going to cost, uh, I don't know, two and a half crores or something to, you know, uh, three crores to open a, a store. Okay. So we're going to borrow 300 crores. We did, we just did an IPO. We can't go to sell shares and raise money again. So we're going to borrow 300 crores and roughly, you know, corporate income taxes, uh, uh, sorry, corporate interest rates. I don't know. It's probably about 15% interest rate. Yeah. So 15% interest rate on 300 crores. That's a yearly interest bill of 45 crores, 45 crores a year of interest. Now, how will the Domino's board of directors and shareholders make a decision on should they borrow this money? They need this money. How will they make a decision? Should they borrow this money or should they issue shares to get this money? We'll go into the technicalities of this later, but for this purpose, let's focus on uh, how they'll do it. They'll say, okay, hey, we already spent five crores, eight crores, and you know another eight crores every year on our interest expense. If we were all of a sudden going to pay another 45 crores as expense, interest expense, we don't have that much money. If we do that, we will become a net income negative company. This will all become red if that happens. And what happens if this happens? Our share price will go down. If, if our net income goes red, our share price will drop like a rock and that sounds poetic but that's what's going to happen if a company that has a positive net income so long if they made a stupid decision by going and borrowing so much money with so much more interest expense especially in a market like this uh, their share price is going to drop because net income is the amount of money that the shareholders take home that's the money the shareholders get if that is negative that means the shareholders are not getting any money so why should they pay I think Domino's uh, share price is about 800 rupees a share why would they pay that they would probably drop it down to like 300 rupees a share and and that actually brings up an interesting point but you know uh, Jubilant Foodworks or Domino's is probably one of India's most amazing uh, food retail success stories and probably the only uh, food retail company that's listed on the stock market so let's if you go here to Google Finance you will see that this is Domino's their market capitalization, that is the value of the company, is 57 billion rupees. That actually is basically is 5,700 crores. 57 billion rupees is 5,700 crores. And that's roughly about what? It's roughly about a billion, 1.3 billion dollars. That is 
just the Indian arm of Domino's. Domino's is a worldwide company. Just the Indian franchisee is worth $1.2 billion. Go look at the main company, Domino's. That company is actually valued at uh, $1.7 billion or just a little more than how much uh, this uh, this company is uh, valued at and that's that's so uh, that, that, that's pretty interesting right that the Indian Domino's is actually which is probably 10% of the global Domino's is actually valued almost the same as the global company uh, Domino's 1.2 billion dollars 1.7 billion dollars and the reason that's happening in this case is because the uh, the, the American parent company they have a huge amount of debt. I mean, the, the company got sold to a private equity company. They put a lot of debt on it. So that company has a lot of debt. So which is why we examine the reason, right? Because that company has a lot of debt, uh, the amount, they have a lot of interest expense. Because of that, the shareholders get only very little money. So they're valuing that company at a significant discount, whereas this company has got very little debt, very little interest expense, and so they're valuing this company, uh, you know, fairly high. And also in India, pizza is a growth story. So this company is going significantly. Look at that, 33%, 50%. I suspect that Domino's worldwide is probably only growing at 10% or 12% or any, any of those uh, numbers. Uh, so there you go. Now you realize why you went through an income statement, the different components of it, uh, the different financial ratios and what kind of decisions are made in a company using uh, an income statement and its ratios. And hopefully you're comfortable with that right now. All right. Thank you very much for patiently listening to me today. I will see you soon in the next session. Bye.